I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Amen. And I titled this message this morning, Will You Be Among the Lifted? Amen. Will You Be Among the Lifted? And uh, also, amen, we want to welcome all our visitors, and I hope and pray that your, your life is encouraged this morning, amen. We're not here to put anybody down. We're not here, you know, to say that we have the answers for everything, and we're definitely not here to say we're perfect, amen. Amen, we're not here to say we're perfect, because we're far from perfection, amen. Just look at my leadership. I'm just kidding. I was going to say, just look at me. And I said, I'm going to throw it on them. I'm tired of throwing myself under the bus all the time. Huh? We're not perfect, amen? We're forgiven, but we're not perfect, amen? So if you're a visitor this morning, I hope that you're blessed. I hope that this word lifts your spirit and provokes a curiosity to know more about what we're talking about and will also lead you to Christ, amen, to desire him more in your life. All he could do is love you, like we talked about. Love your life forever. Amen? So God bless you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 17 and verses 18. You have it? Say amen. amen. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words is my purpose in preaching this message. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you. We pray this morning, God, that you would just settle our spirit. And God, that you would just speak to us, God. I pray, God, that we wouldn't be led to the left or the right. And, Father, teach false teachings and false doctrines. And, God, let me not just say what I think it means, but let me say what the Spirit has given me to say, Lord. I pray for every heart, God, cultivate it and prepare it for the seed that you're about to plant. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody says? Uh, before you're seated, look at something. Just tell them, are you ready? Look at the person on the other side and ask them, are you ready? You may be seated. Are you among those that will be lifted? Now my friends, listen to me. Whether you are lifted in the rapture or at the end of your life, will you be lifted on high to be with him? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 17, it says right here, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up. We'll be caught up. First of all, let me tell you this. The word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is not found in the Bible. Caught up or taken up is another word for snatched away or snatched up and it is a word that is means raptured so they added be ready for the rapture not in the bible to be caught up to be caught up now let me tell you why people won't be caught up with him it'll be because they're caught up here because they've been caught up here. I remember hearing my parents in Spanish, but in English they would say, the reason why you can't see what I'm saying is because you're caught up with the wrong crowd. The reason why you don't understand what we're trying to tell you is because you got caught up with the different people. You know, you got caught up with stuff that you shouldn't have got caught up with. I'll tell you here today, the church should get caught up, but to be caught up in him, not caught up with the politics of ministry. You look at me like you don't even understand that you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's politics in ministry. People trying to get ahead and using people's heads as a ladder. 
stepping on people to get up. You get caught up, my friend. But the Bible teaches us to be caught up is to want to be caught up with him. I want to be caught up with him at the end of my life. But I want to be caught up with the things of righteousness, with the things of holiness. I want to be caught up with the things that are healthy for my life and for my heart. I want to get caught up with the things that are healthy for my marriage and my children so that I can see the benefits of me getting caught up with what is right. People that get caught up with what is wrong see the benefits of that also. Talk to people that are in prison. They'll say, man, I'm in here doing this because I got caught up, man. It's a slang word that you got hooked in to something that you're now regretting. See, I want to get caught up, but I want to get caught up with him. I, I, I want to get all caught up in him, all tangled. Can we get tangled up in God? Are there three people here that would love to get tangled up in him? I, I, would, I would love to get tangled up with God. Wrapped up, tied up, and tangled all up in Jesus. Don't ask me to sing this song. Heaven is where Jesus came from. It is where he lived. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verses 31, Jesus came down from heaven. The first part of that verse, it is, a, it is a clear description that Jesus came down from heaven. Somebody want to say, you know, all the bad stuff that is happening, you know, because this is hell. This ain't hell, my friend. This ain't hell. This is far from hell. Hell is hot. Hell is real. Just as much as heaven is real, hell is real. He came down from heaven. The first part of that verse says that Jesus came down from heaven. And he also says this, the one who came from above is above all. How many know he's above all? Well, how many know he's Lord of all? You heard it said, if he's not Lord of all, he ain't Lord at all. He came from above. The New Testament describes where he came from. There's many scriptures, but here is one. A description that Jesus, John the beloved, John the Baptist said that he came from above. When you say above, do you look down? No, when you say above, you look up. Above is above. How else can I break it down for you? Above is up. Up. The scripture in Thessalonians says, we'll be taken up. Whether you believe it or not, we'll be taken up. Whether you're taken up in the physical as the rapture hits, or you'll be taken up at the last breath of your life to be taken up. Then it tells us, the ending of that verse, it tells us no longer above, but now it says, the one who came from heaven. He came from heaven. Jesus came from heaven. In Acts chapter 1, we see that after he administered to the disciples, the Bible says that he ascended, that he was taken up. So where he came from was heaven, and now he is taken back into heaven. A clear picture where he came from. So the promise that he gives to the church to be taken up with him is not a lie. It is true, my friend, that we all have a place in him. If we do John chapter 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. We got no problem in believing in God. The world's got a problem in believing in the next one. Believe in Jesus also. Believe in me also. There is the problem. Because God could be almost anything to almost anyone. Believe in God, no problem. Right on. But believe in me also. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. You 
me and I could add you onto all these other beliefs that I have? No, because there's no salvation under any other name that you could obtain, that you could receive salvation. Only the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. But that's just the way it is. He's a jealous God. Jesus was taken back to heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I'm at, you may be also. It is his promise to the church. Where you and I can be at the end of it all. Look at verses 13 of verse chapter 4. We don't want you to be uninformed. There's another translation that says this. We don't want you to be ignorant. We don't want you to be ignorant. Don't be ignorant about what is to take place on this earth today. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it that he's coming back. There's a reason why the Bible doesn't give us a date why he's coming back. Then you would be ready. No, he, this is a walk of faith, my friend. And God expects us to live a life of faith and to live a life of faith and a victory and to know that I don't know when he's coming back, but I'm ready in and out of season. You're not going to catch me with my hands in the cookie jar. You're not going to catch me messing around over here because his power is evident on my life there are too many believers that say they believe in God but they're dipping and dabbing and they're messing around we don't believe that in victory Ari. we believe that if you're holy you live a holy life because of what he's done in your life we believe that God can heal God can deliver God can fix your heart God can fix your marriage God can fix your children give it to him you shouldn't be carrying that burden on your shoulder cast it on him because he cares for you he prepares the bride for heaven the reason why he hasn't come back is because the bride is ugly make a bang gonna do it Maybelline ain't got the cure we can't be ignorant ignorant my friend is when you give your heart to God and you've been serving God for a long time but you become numb to conviction. You become numb to altar calls. You become callous to winning souls and you're just a Christian by title just like you were when you were a Catholic. There's nothing different about it. When you were a Catholic, you did nothing. You are a Christian and you still do nothing. I know I can lose some folks by saying that. That's all right. That's all right. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Are you hearing me? See, ignorant means that you know this is going to happen, but you're willing to gamble. You're willing to take a risk. Why risk your family for that? Why risk your life for that? When well, we all know that God is a God that opens up heaven and pours out a blessing, you'll have no room enough to contain it. Somebody told me this. Somebody said, listen, what if there is no hell? What if there is no heaven when you die? What if there is no Jesus? What if there is no God? What if there is no judgment? I told them this. I said, if that happens, which I know it's not, but if that happens, this was still the best life to live on earth. This was still the good life to live on earth. I lived above the expectations of other. They said I wouldn't make it to 18. I'm 50 years old today. They said I end up in prison. I'm in Dallas, Texas and I am your pastor. They said you won't amount to much. I understand that but with him I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. This is still the best life to live. But my friend, I want you to know, you will open your eyes in the presence of a judge or in the presence of a savior. See, Paul, when he writes to the church at Thessalonica, Paul was not ignorant. Paul even believed that Jesus could come back in his time 
But he didn't say it would happen in his time. But he knew that it could happen in his time. Which is to say it could happen at any time. It is to say this, beloved, listen to me. Our life is like vapor. Our life is but vapor. It is here and then it is gone. And for those that say that we've been hearing that Jesus is coming back for so many years. A day to the Lord is as a thousand years. So to you it may be long. But to him it has not been that long yet. Somebody say amen for that. Because it gives the church opportunity to do two things. Number one, repent for what it has not been doing. And number two, start doing what you have not been doing. To bring them in to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If not, then there's a bunch of ignorant people in the church. Ignorant people in the church. You know what ignorant means? Misinformed. Misinformed. What part of go don't you understand? It's only two words. G and O. What part? Is it the O or is it the G? It means the same. Go means go. It means move. It's an action word. Doesn't mean to stand still. It means go. Green light means what? Green light means what? Jesus gave us a green light. And what do we do? Hit the red light. See, he says, don't be ignorant. Don't be misinformed. Then he tells us also to encourage one another. Trying to encourage us. Uh, I, I know we're going to hit a little turbulence, amen, but, but we're going to land this thing. Amen. We're going to land this thing, amen. We're going we're to land safely. We're going to find some smooth air. Got to hit some turbulence in the beginning. Let the truth be told. Huh? The real gospel will always ruffle the feathers. The real gospel. Uh, 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 the, the, the gospel that's not real will always tickle the ears and make people laugh. And everybody will leave and say, what a beautiful sermon. But all that makes you is a sermon sipper. You just like sipping on sermons. And stealing all the nuggets and stealing all you can. But never applying any one of them. That's that turbulence, okay? Excuse me. Verse 13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who have, are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you, by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not proceed those who have fallen to sleep. Now listen to me. Verse 1 and 5. Verse 1 and 5 talk about those that will be taken. But when you read verses 6 to 7, it begins to talk about those that will be left behind. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I read verse 13, but it was verses 1 to 5. Look at chapter 5, verses 1. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. He's saying this. The time for us to know when it's going to happen isn't important. What is important is how you and I display the life of Christ to the world. And it is a life of faith. It is a life of faith. To abstain. To stay away from. For us to be delivered. Are there any delivered folks in the house? Set free people. Huh? Knowing when he comes back to you and I, let me say it like this, shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter. Whether it's in this generation 
or your children's generation or your children's children's generation it shouldn't matter to you because as a believer your name is already written in the Lamb's book of life so you're already there my friend you live this life according to the scripture but there's a responsibility that comes upon the church and that is to reach the people that are still out there our beloved family our friends and to give them the truth not your philosophy not your ideas not what you think this is why a lot of people look at the church and they say man the way you're saying this is like you're holier than thou don't talk at me talk to me just let your light shine Jesus my friend in the rapture is coming back for the saved those who made themselves alive in him are you alive in him those that make themselves alive in him we have given our hearts to him and he has changed our life completely my friend listen he will not be coming back for the lost and those that are still dead into their sin there's still hope though say there's still hope he's coming back for the saved could it be that he hasn't come back because the church hasn't done their job in reaching the lost I believe it I, I, I believe that's true because many do not share their faith many do not share their faith not every ministry listen when we came 18 years ago i thought that we'd be on the street fighting for people because of all the churches that were in the area when we went out there and we went out to a lot of areas very seldom and i'm not saying this to put any church down but i'm saying this to say this when we went out there and we still go out there we still got teams that go out there very seldom do they come back with the testimony that they bumped into this street team or they bumped into this street team or they bumped into this street team or they bumped into this street team for this ministry and from this ministry and from this ministry most of the time you don't find them yet this is the bible belt yet this is the Bible Belt the job to reach this world because of what's about to take place on this earth will you be among the lifted that day to ask yourself are you going in the rapture if it was to happen Somebody was to say, listen, the rapture is going to happen in five minutes. Are you going? If they was to say it's happening in five minutes, are you going? We know that it's not, so don't go get on Facebook. Your pastor just said five minutes is coming. Don't do me dirty like that. If he was coming in five minutes, would you be going? Now listen, if you say, I hope so, you're probably not. Can pastor just be real? It's like saying, are you an American? And you say, I hope so. Well, you know if you were born in this country, just like you know if you were born in Jesus. If you were born in Jesus, you know you were born in Jesus because of the effects it had upon your life, because of the changes it had upon you. Your vocabulary has changed. Your outlook has changed. Everything has changed. God doesn't patch up a heart. God doesn't patch up a life. God gives you a brand new heart. God you a brand new life who wouldn't want a brand new one who wouldn't want a new heart who wouldn't want a new life who wouldn't want to be set free from all of that Job chapter 19 verses 25 he didn't say I think my Redeemer lives he said in Job 19 25 he says I know my Redeemer live it he didn't say I hope he live it he said I know my Redeemer live it talk about Job having faith talk about a man that is talking about something that he knows about I believe that we as a church we ought to know that we are taken if the rapture was to hit but we got a job because we don't know when it's gonna happen and it really doesn't matter because I got work to do as a matter of fact God don't come yet 
I still need to reach my family. I still need to reach my sisters. I still need to reach my brother. I still need to reach my mom. I, I still need to reach my cousin. I still need to reach my friend. I still need to reach my co-workers. Or we do not care. Not only does he say that, but Job says this. I know my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, he will stand upon the earth. He will stand upon the earth. He's not coming for those who think they're saved. He's coming for those that know they're saved. For those that know they are saved. We got saved. We need to stay saved. If you're saved, stay saved. For the sake of your loved ones, for the sake of your family. If you're not right, get right. If things are shaky, man, fix it. If you're not honest, become honest. Get these things right, my friend, because listen, I got news for you. There is no stairway to heaven. There is no stairway to heaven. There is only one way and one way only. He will stand upon the earth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16. Look at what it says in verse 16. Beautiful verse. Man, this, this verse, you know, I've read this verse a lot of times when I started to study this. He says, for the Lord himself, for the Lord himself will descend. We know that in the book of Acts, he ascended. Here, he will descend. The Lord himself. The bride is coming back. The groom is coming back for the bride. The Lord himself. Now listen. There is no trumpet involved. And there is no archangel involved. And Gabriel will not blow the trumpet. Jesus, like I talked about on Friday, the gospel needs no improvement by you. And, and to be honest with you, listen to this. Jesus needs no improvement to improve the rapture by letting Gabriel join in. Jesus himself will do it. Jesus, the one you invited into your heart. Huh? The one you invited into your life. Listen, there's something about him coming back for me that makes it special. There's something about knowing that Jesus, at one time in his life, he left heaven and came into this world in the form of a child to fulfill prophecy. Trapped in flesh, God in flesh, born into this world, died at the age of 33. Hung around for 50 days and then ascended into heaven. Where? Back to the right side of the Father. Here. Here, Jesus leaves again. Erase the Jehovah Witness teaching that you know, okay? Because that is false. That Jesus and the angels were created by God and they're equals. No, my friend. Jesus is God. Huh? He himself. Jesus himself. That came into this world as a child is the one that is coming back for the church. You know that there's something special about it. There, there's a story about a prince. A prince that left his palace. And everybody in the kingdom knew who he was. And as he began to leave his palace, he began to take a walk. As he began to take a walk, it began to rain, and he got too far from the palace. And his clothes and his hair and everything was just all messed up. 
He began to look like a homeless person because he just was out there and it was pouring and raining and he was unrecognizable. He went up to a house and he knocked on the door and they opened the door and they said, yeah, what do you want? Didn't recognize who he was. And they said, excuse me, I just want to know if I could borrow an umbrella. So they said, well, hold on. They closed the door and they looked in their little umbrella bag and they seen all these nice ones, but then they seen one old, dirty, broken with holes in it. And they said, I'm not going to give him the good stuff. I'm going to give him this one. They opened the door and they handed it to him. And he grabbed it and he opened it and had holes in it and it was still leaking through. He just said, thank you very much and walked away. And made it back to his palace. The next day, that same prince got in his chariot with all his men and some fine horses, people and soldiers royalty, authoritative, went to that person's house. And the people in the house began to look out the window and say, oh my God, the prince is here. Oh my God, the prince is here. Oh my God, the prince is here. Let's get ready. Everybody get ready. Everybody try to get ready, put on their good clothes. They try to put makeup. They try to clean themselves up. And they open the door and they probably say, yes. Our loving prince. He said, I just came back. To bring you this. That you let me borrow yesterday. And they took it. And they said. If, we'd have, if we would have known who you were. We would have given our best. If we would have known who you were. We would have given you our best. And they took that broken. Beat up. Full of holes in it. And closed the door with shame. And he drove away. It's the same way with God. As he returns. He himself. Like the voice of an archangel. Not an archangel. Like the voice of an archangel. An archangel has a voice of authority. And when he speaks. It sounds as like the voice of trumpets. John the Beloved on the Lord's Day on the island of Patmos heard a loud voice behind him. And the voice was as the voice of a trumpet. And John seen Jesus. There's something special about him coming back for us. If he comes back in the rapture for us, he himself will descend and come back. Or at the end of life, he will be right there to take our hand and take us into paradise with him. Either way is good for me. God bless all for you. Either way is good for me. I'll take it either way. At the end of my life or in the rapture. My pastor had a vision and he said, God gave me a vision of the rapture. And he said, in this vision I seen the rapture take place. And I seen people leaving. And as I seen people leaving up to heaven, some stopped in midair because they were chained to the earth. Because their lives were still chained to the earth. And you would say, oh man, I don't think God's like that. Well, why did he turn Lot's wife into a pillar of salt just because she looked bad? I, I know you're just like me, man. We're the same, man. You know, the punishment don't fit the crime. It's like the punishment does not fit the crime. I mean, God, all she did was look back. Doesn't the New Testament say a man putting his hands to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom? Study this stuff, man. It's all in the Bible. You got to study this stuff. She looked back. Why? Because eventually she'd go back. He said, let's just cut the chase, man. If you're going to end up going back later, then let's just kill it now. It's better that you've never known me than to know me and leave me. Some heavy stuff, right? I mean, 
Sure, I feel convicted already. I feel like making altar call. I said, boy, I better be living all this stuff. Huh? I want to be ready. Bottom line is this, man. I got to be ready. We're late to everything, right? Well, me and Valerie are, okay? Some of you are late to stuff too. You're late all the time, right? Most of the time, it's because we weren't ready. Well, honey, how long is it going to take you in there, man? Hello? Uh, guys, man, we get up, we shower, we do our hair, we do, put on our clothes. Vieja? Wait. Is it straight? I say it's all straight. It's straight. Perfect. Mi dulce de coco. Perfect. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, man. Want me to plug, I'll unplug all these machines you got here. You ready? No, no, no. no. Huh? I said, put the makeup on the car. Can you put the makeup on the car? Hold on. Huh? And then there's some of you guys who are the same way. Wives could be sitting in the living room saying, honey, it's prayer time already. And there you are. Oh, should I wear these shoes? Should I wear these shoes? Does it go with this? Does it go with this? Does my belt, oh, the belt doesn't go. Oh, let me go get another belt. Then I just, does the tie go? Oh, the tie don't go with the belt because the belt goes with the shoes. And then, oh, I got to get another tie. We're not ready. And we're sitting in the car. Just like the rapture, honking the horn. It's a trumpet. Rapture! If you don't come out, I'm leaving. How many have ever said that? And shame on you for those of you that did do it. Uh, I threatened her a lot, but I've not done it. I'm going to be in the car. One minute, you're not there. I'm gone. Four minutes later, she's in the car. She knew I wasn't going to jam. I can't do that. I, you know, I threaten all I want, but I'm not. Oh, man, it didn't work. <laughs> next time, next time I got to extend the minutes. <laughs> Hello? Because we weren't ready. Because we weren't ready. Huh? Meetings get canceled because we weren't ready. Jobs are not gotten by you and I because we weren't ready. You say, man, when you go into that interview, sell yourself, man. Have to get the gab. Know how to present yourself. Smile. Trim that mustache. Oops. Sorry. Huh? Clip them eyebrows. Huh? Take it. And then, and then we go, we go like, what up? Man, I hope I get this job. Huh? Um, 25 bucks an hour? What do you mean get out? Okay. You weren't ready. Huh? Half of the stuff that goes wrong in our lives is because we weren't ready. People that get married and it goes crazy. Weren't ready. Weren't ready. You're ready for all that other lovey-dovey stuff. Oh yeah, everybody's ready for that. But for the responsibility that comes after? Huh? Got to be ready. Doesn't the Bible teach us to be ready in and out of season? To be ready. I want to be ready. I mean, I, I may not be, you know, actually fully 100% ready. But I'm in the process. I'm in the process of getting ready. I'm doing everything I can in my power to get ready to preach the gospel. To go to Bible school. To study the word of God. To win souls. I want a pastor. But you can't even go to the men's home and preach to them. You want to win souls, man. You got to go out there and flip a garbage can over and make that your pulpit. Some people want to sing, but they won't go to the homes and sing. They won't go to the rally and sing. They want to be invited on the mountain of God. Go out there, man. Go to the highway and byway and sing. Be ready. Be ready to do his will. Why? Because the Lord himself 
is coming back. The Lord himself. No one gets to heaven on their own. Nobody gets to heaven on their own, my friend. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Did you hear me? I said the road to hell is paved with good intentions. All the good you do is going to get you that. I don't hurt nobody. I mind my own business. I don't do anything. I don't, I don't bother nobody. I don't kill nobody. I don't hurt nobody. Matter of fact, all of you that are here are worse than me. That's why we're Christians. Because we understood how unrighteous we were and needed a Savior. Nobody gets to heaven on their own. If that was the case, then why did he come and die upon the cross? Huh? Why did he come and die? He won't send an angel. He himself is coming. He himself is coming. And he's coming with a loud command. A command that the world will hear. But those that are connected to him shall be taken. Somebody say amen. amen. The world. Listen to me. I'm going to end it with this. Where's the thing? You can make your way. But let me say it like this. The world is headed. If it hasn't already, just with the stuff that has happened. Sandy Elementary School. Just, just that, man, will just throw you in a bummer. You know, I was in the room with little Jesse, and he was on his computer. He was showing me some stuff. And then Valerie walked in and said, Jess, did you hear on the news? I go, what? She goes, some dude, some guy walked in and, and killed a whole classroom of kids and, and teachers. And I said, no. I said, really? Boom. Went over there, started watching it. I mean, I don't know these people. I don't know these teachers. I'll probably never meet none of them. But regardless, it affected me. I was still affected. Through the television and through that type of news, I was still affected. Everywhere I went that day, went to get a haircut. They were watching it on the, Span on the Spanish station. I went to a couple other places. Everybody was watching it. Everybody was astonished, was blown away. How could anybody do this? And you know, the reports that they were getting were becoming even bigger and bigger and bigger and uglier. And we were like, how can this happen? But the world, my friend, is headed on a head-on collision with God's judgment. Yes, I said it. Report it to the politicians. I don't care. But let me, tell, let me tell you like this. Dale Earnhardt, the racer. I don't know if I said his last name right. Earnhardt. His last turn on the Daytona 500. When his car was sent head on into a wall at 180 miles per hour. They said his head was crushed, pushed back all the way to his back. Killed instant. But there were many race drivers. There's a device that they have for race drivers. And it's a device that goes on their neck and it protects all their neck and it protects part of their back and their chest. They said if Dale would have wore that device, he might have been able to survive the accident. But Dale, like many other race drivers, said, I don't wear it because it affects me in my performance as a race driver. So they don't wear it. It's like the officer that leaves and goes out into the beat without his bulletproof vest on. That day, he happens to have a gunfight. There's a device that God has given the world. 
It's a device to protect us from a collision that is about to take place in this earth. It is called salvation. It is called redemption. It is called forgiveness. It is called the grace of God. It is called the mercy of God. My friend, it is called heaven. In Spanish, it is called el cielo. El cielo. Heaven. A device that he has given the world that the world says, I don't want to wear it. I don't want to put it on because it affects me as a man. It affects me as a woman. It affects me in what I do. It affects my family. It interferes. I can't. I'm not ready to give up this. I'm not ready to give up that. So I don't want to wear it. I'd rather just trust what I'm doing and take a risk and take a chance. Go for it, baby, because you could do whatever you want. But if you're like me, you say, I've taken too many risks out there already. Not about to take any more. Not about to take any more. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. And the devil in John 10, 10 comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Steal the way, kill the truth, destroy your life. That's his job. That's his job. A hater's job is to hate. Let him hate. Because haters make us greater. He's given us this device. It's his scripture. Secure in him. I feel more secure in God than I do in Valerie. To be perfectly honest with you. I feel more secure in Jesus then I feel more secure in Val. I feel more secure in him. The day I wanted to give my life to God, I was 19 years old. I invited her. I asked her if she wanted to come. I was hoping she'd say, yeah. But I knew that I had to make a decision if she said no. If she said, that's not me. That's not me. You're the mess up. You're the one that's out of control. I can, I can maintain and I can hold my liquor and I can do what I got to do. I knew that I would have to make a decision. Am I still going to pursue this? I'm glad that she said, yeah, and I didn't have to go that route. But I did think about it. Like, man, I, you know, she said, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I guess. And, you know, what is it? I go, I don't know, man. Sister just says we need to do it, man, and it'll change us, man. Let's just do it. Come on, you want to do it? Want to go? She's going to a Bible study. She's going to a Bible study. This is why I believe in life groups. This is why I believe in your life groups. We got saved in a Bible study. A little house. A little house with a few people. And a guy teaching, preaching. A guy that came out of the neighborhoods there in Maravilla. I remember the message, man. The armor of God. He preached on the armor. All I did was stare at him. And just, I want to do that. It was like there was a connection. That's what I want to do. I don't want to do that. I'm preaching a polluted gospel over here and training all these kids and training all these people for madness and hurt and destruction when I could do the same thing here but follow the truth. And listen, I understood early in the game that before I am over people, I have to learn how to be under people first. So when I got saved, that didn't, I didn't automatically come over people. I got saved, me and Val got saved, and we came under leadership. Got under leadership. Didn't matter my reputation on the street. It didn't matter that there was like five or six of us from my neighborhood in the church, all of us sitting together, everybody giving us props and people looking. Wow, those guys the South Side Gang, those guys from the South Side. Oh, look at all of them got saved. And the pastor Ed was always around us and, and he took an interest in us and discipled us and worked with us and still placed us under leaders. And then when we were under leaders, eventually God began to raise us up to be over people. Because people that could get under people make great leaders to be over people. See, that getting under thing I'm talking about, all it means is being ready. Getting ready. Shortcuts won't prosper you. It's just getting ready. Be there. Be ready. Be ready. All the football players on the team don't play. All the baseball players on the team don't play. They don't all play. All the basketball players, 
I mean, I don't know a lot about sports, but I asked my son. I asked the different guys that are there. I said, who's that guy? Oh, they drafted him a while back. Oh, why doesn't he? Well, they, they don't use him yet. He's just there. They're working with him. And, you know, oh, well, I mean, that's like wasted talent. No, he's waiting. He's preparing. He goes to practice. You know, they're working with him. Because when he comes out, he's going to come out shiny. He's going to come out making threes. He's going to come out making touchdowns. He's going to come out hitting home runs. Because as he waited, he was preparing. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let's wait for his return. But let's not sit and twiddle our thumbs. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. Let's do what God's called us to do. Let's be involved in ministry because what ministry does is it nurtures the saints. And it nurtures you to get more strong, to be out there, to be more effective. This is like a huddle. We come here to huddle. We come here to gain from God, to get from God. Your car eventually, when you drive it over, over, and over, it goes on F to E. And when it goes to E, you have to go to the gas station. And you have to fill up again. This is why we come here. Because we're on E. Some are on half a tank. Some still got a full tank from last weekend. So you haven't used it. You haven't used it. You haven't went nowhere. It's time to put some miles on, my friend. It's time to put some miles. He's coming back. Stand with me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. And magnify his name. Think about what the Lord has deposited in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.